Hi! I'm gonna try and do this all in one take, because I don't feel like editing tonight. And it's 10 o'clock, which is why it's dark. Anyway, a lot of you wanted to know uh, how I did the voice effects, all the modulations and stuff for the lore video, and tonight I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of audio technical uh, words and phrases and jargon, and I'm gonna do my best to simplify it and make it easy to understand, and uh, by the end of it, I'll walk you through how to make an, uh, an Aurelianite voice. Um, and I'll show you the Mythrix files and things like that too. So, it's gonna be fun. First of all, microphone. You should probably have one if you wanna do voice effects. I have, uh, as you can tell, a Blue Yeti, which is, ev everyone and their mother has a Blue Yeti. It's like a hundred bucks, it's a great microphone. Uh, this here, oh, it connects to your computer via USB. This here is a, I don't know, foam? microphone some people call it a fuzz buster uh i don't know the technical term but it's 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 microphone foam and the idea is that this catches what's called your plosives and plosives are um some words make popping sounds so for example pop 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 uh you can hear the microphone kind of right um so if i say pop and it's not protected by a foam, you can hear the plosives. If I put the foam over it and I say pop, 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 you can see the difference it makes. So this just helps, um, it helps out your plosives. If you don't have one of these, you have to be a little further away from the microphone. But unfortunately, if you're further away from the microphone, it sounds more like you're in an open room space instead of nice and up close and personal where the mic quality is always best. Um, just a fun fact, uh, singers are up as close to the microphone as they can, or sorry, Singers are up as close to the, well, as a little, anyway, close to the microphone, the closer you are, the clearer it is. Um, you'll have to play around with the gain and stuff a little bit. Huh, <sighs> I need a drink. That was loud. So, the uh, Blue Yeti um, or any USB mic should be able to just connect straight into your computer. And if it doesn't, um, you can use what's called an interface. And an audio interface, hold on a second, this is gonna be really silly. Don't mind the Taco Bell. Um, so this is an audio interface. Also, uh, hi, hello. This is an audio interface. Uh, this one specifically is a Steinberg MK2 UR22. And um, I have my speakers plugged into here. Don't worry about that. Uh, the, the USB mic can plug into your computer and it'll be perfectly fine, but if you don't have a USB mic, uh, the XLR cables go into here and your audio software will be able to pick it up just fine. So, we're coming back. We're going back to the top of my monitor. Okay, coolio. Am I still in chat? Awesome. Now that we understand how microphones and things work, we're gonna head over into FL Studio. So this is FL Studio. Yes, there is a free version. You can do everything I'm about to show you on the free version. It is a DAW, a digital audio workstation. Um, there's FL Studio, there's Logic, there's Ableton, uh, GarageBand, all these are examples of DAWs. Some are more technical than others. And this one here, for the most part, is meant to make music, right? These are some, some pre-built-in ones. Uh, let's see, let's put in some, I wanna do claps, let's put in hats. And then let's put in snares, right? That's called a four on the floor beat. Now, it can be used for a lot more than just uh, making music. It can be used for audio recording to a much deeper point than Audacity. You can use Audacity or a smaller audio recorder, record your lines and then slap it into FL Studio and do the rest of this, you can. Uh, for simplicity's sake, I'm going to do it all right in here. So first, we're gonna need our mixer channel, which are these little buttons here. And this is very important to have. Uh, we're gonna go over to our microphone channel, which is this M right here. Uh, boy, I just realized this is very small, sorry. Uh, we're gonna go over to, in one, in two. Remember how I showed you the, in, the interface earlier? One of these buttons on your end will uh, pick up your microphone. Ooh, okay, it's, it's picking, picking it up, up now. now going to uh, turn that down a little bit, so hopefully you won't hear it. Now, we're going to record our first audio. There's a big recorder button right here, and into the playlist as an audio clip. Far over the misty mountains cold. Cool, now that that's done. I'm going to drop that. <laughs> there we go. Gonna drop that. And let's listen back to it, see how it goes. Far over the 
misty mountains cold. Oh, I uh, missed a couple of notes. Whatever, it's fine. Now, we are going, it, it, it goes into the uh, instrument rack as this thing, Untitled Recording 30s, it's fine. We are going to assign this to Mixer Channel 1. I use my mouse wheel here. You can assign it to any channel you want, but we're just gonna go to one. And now that we have Mixer Channel 1 selected, all these slots over here are for effects. If you click on this little drop down arrow, boom! Look at all these effects you can get, holy cow. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to show you each one of the ones I use for the video and I sang a little song as an example because we will start with reverb. When you apply reverb onto something, it makes it sound more powerful, more big, it makes you sound like you're in a cathedral. It gives you a small echo. So you heard how it was a second ago. Here's how it is when you add reverb. Far over the misty So you can hear it kind of sounds like I'm in a cathedral. Uh, the next one is one of my personal favorites. It is a chorus down there. And a chorus takes your sound wave, uh, duplicates it, and then off um, offsets it a little bit to make this kind of conflicting out of pitch. And it sounds like this. Far over the misty mountains cold. That one's cool. You add them both together. Ah, now that we're adding them both together, we're starting to make a custom voice modulator. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so now we're gonna move into the next one I used, which is a delay. Ah, oh, delay is my favorite. Check this out. So a delay does exactly what it sounds like. Ah, where'd it go? Sorry. Where'd you go? There you go. A delay does exactly what it sounds like. Listen. Isn't that cool? So, but what we're, well, what I did for Mythrix to make him sound robotic is I cranked that delay knob way down here and then I took it up just like a little bit. I took it up just a tiny bit. Ah, okay, so delay is very fun. Uh, and then the last one I used is a flange. Where is it called? Come on, stupid thing, sorry. Uh, a flanger, there we go. And a flanger is kind of like a chorus, but sounds different, just trust me on this. I'm gonna cut down the delay, this is a flanger. Far over the misty mountains cold. Now, let's kinda add them all together. Let's play with these levels here. Let's kind of, I, I want to turn the reverb way up. Let's get the chorus in there. I definitely want the delay. Now it sounds like this. It sounds like an alien singing. That's super cool. Um, now, uh, with the Aurelianite, I pitched it down and you can do that by single clicking, left clicking on the recording in the instrument rack, and there's a pitch right there. And we're gonna crank that pitch down just like a little bit of the way, it's gonna load, and then now it sounds like this. Oh, oh, that's so sick. Okay, so with these four effects, that's how I built pretty much all of the ones. Oh, um, when I did the, uh, I'll show you how I do the uh, like radio thing afterwards. Anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead, let's let's cut all these out. Let's just get rid of these real quick because we're gonna start from scratch and we're gonna imitate the Aurelianite voice I did. All right, I'm gonna turn on the microphone again and we're gonna we're gonna record a line. Uh, hmm, what line should we record? Let me let me read something off of a Yu-Gi-Oh card. So I'm gonna take uh, Fiendish Chain here, and I'm going to read it in the same tone that I read out the Aurelianite voice. Now this takes uh, a little bit of like a gravelly tone, um, so I'm gonna try and mimic that as best I could. Uh, so I'm gonna read this card in the tone I did for Aurelianite, and it's gonna be great. Activate this card by targeting one effect monster on the field. Its effects are negated. 
Also, it cannot attack. When it is destroyed, destroy this card. Cool, now let's get rid of this thing. There we go. Now we sound normal again. And it'll sound a little something like this. Activate this card by targeting one effect monster. Okay, sounds super cringy, but let's play with it a little bit. Let's add in my favorite boy reverb, very important. Activate this card by targeting one. Ah, I forgot to set it to mixer channel one. There we go. Let's give it another shot. Activate this card by targeting one effect monster on the feet. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Um, let's add in... Oh, let's go ahead and pitch it down. I'll click on this, and then I'll drag that pitch down. We'll get it to Aurelianite Tone. Activate this card by targeting one effect monster on the field. Yeah, there we go. And with the reverb, that sounds real good. Its effects are negated. Also, it cannot attack when it is just... Yeah. And then let's go ahead and get the delay in so we can make him sound like a robot. Uh... Boy, it's starting to get crowded on the screen. <laughs> I usually do this with two monitors. Again, we're crank it lower so we can get a robot voice. Not quite. A little lower. Okay, a little closer. Also, it cannot attack when it is destroyed. Little bit down. This card by targeting one effect monster on the field. Its effects are negated. Yeah, yeah, it's that, that, oh boy, that sounds good. Okay, um, let's add in another one that I showed you. How about a chorus? Let's see what it sounds like with the chorus. Activate this card by targeting one effect monster on the field. Its effects are negated. Also, it cannot attack. When it is destroyed, destroy this card. Yeah, there we go. Okay, great. Now, I want to keep that. And the very final thing we're going to do is we're going to go to M. This is the master channel. The master channel has everything. It controls every single one of the mixers. And we're going to add in what's called a compressor. Um, it brings the low tones high and it brings the high, sorry, low volumes high and the high volumes low. There's a fruity compressor, but it has a custom one called Sound Goodizer, and I like that a lot. For vocals, I like going to the D channel, and then now it sounds like this. Activate this card by targeting one effect monster on the field. Its effects are negated. Also, it cannot attack. Yeah. And then after you have this done, you can just go ahead and file, export. You can export it as uh, an MP3, because MP3s are small. Uh, they're small and they sound good, and that's how you do voice effects with FL Studio. It's I know that was a lot of clicking, but after you get kind of comfortable with the environment, it's really it's really absolutely a no-brainer. Um, just for reference, I'm going to file and we're going to open, and I'm gonna no, I don't want to save changes. We're gonna open uh, Risk Rain 2 Lore Audio. I'm gonna show you. Uh, oh, Mythrix. Okay, this is gonna take a minute to load because I had, oh, I got text from my girlfriend. Uh, this is going to take a minute to load because there is a ton of audio clips that it has to pull in and there's also a ton of effects on the Mythrix channel. So we'll give this, or on the Mythrix Master channel. So we'll give this a minute. My roommate bought me a blue eyes spirit dragon recently. Oh, everything's backwards on this camera. That one's pretty cool. They got me into Yu-Gi-Oh a little bit. Excuse me, cause um, I don't know. I really I I play Magic. I like Magic a lot. But they're like, you should play Yu-Gi-Oh, and I was like, okay. So I bought a structured deck. I bought a blue eyes one, cause I was like, blue eyes is cool, right? Um, so I've got, uh, and then I've since made a bunch of uh, changes and improvements to it. So I got like, uh, you know, I got I got the blue eyes white dargons. I got like three of them, um, and then I have uh, th this girl's cool. This is this is my wife. Her name is Maiden with the eyes of blue. I love her so much. Uh, she lets you summon a blue eyes. We got okay, cool. It's done. Woo! <laughs> oh, we can hear the Mythrix modulation right now. So you can see all the <laughs> all the different audio lines I recorded from Mythrix. Oh, that was nuts. Um, so sound goodizer, I have a delay. Oh, I forgot to tell you about EQ. That's okay, EQ can take a video all on its own. Uh, we got reverb um, and a little, oh, I didn't actually put, that was it, okay. It's just delay, EQ, reverb, and then a little bit of pitch downwards. So like, here's the brutal crown one. You can see I pitched it downwards just a little bit. Uh, let's go to, What's what's this one here? Are you concentrating? 
falling inward, condensing, hardening. A singularity shrink. That was for the focus convergence. What is this one with the thing at the start? <laughs> Have you forgotten that those gates are my design? <laughs> anyway, uh, that's Mythrix. Uh, let me show you, by the way, for the rest of the video, I'm just going to be showing you these things. Um, no, I don't want to save any changes. The rest of the ones will uh, load faster. So Garth is the uh, guy on the radio. Ah. So in EQ, uh, that's another kind of effect you can put on things. Uh, EQ lets you change... Um, uh, this is hard to explain. Uh, and there's a preset on here called, uh, I think I used old telephone. Um, and that'll sound, uh, let's see, a little something like this. Day three. I've encountered a strange alien compound. Several platforms. And so this one was super easy. All I did was uh, just apply that EQ filter and that's it. And then lastly, we have um, the Grove Tender. She was really fun to do. I loved making the Grove Tender. Because all I had to do was put on some very gentle effects and then just speak and record with a very gentle voice. Let me get the mixer board out. There we are. All we have is a little bit of reverb, a little bit of delay. Here's what that looks like. I had the delay cranked up a little higher than I did from Aurelianite. And then onto the chorus, very standard. And with the reverb, I had the wet and the dry about even. And that's that. That's pretty much uh, all I did. Uh, I know that seems like a lot, and I know this was a bit of a long video, but now this can give you a little bit of uh, insight on what it was like to make these voices. It was a it's, it's a little bit harder than you think, isn't it? Um, but again, if you're interested in learning this stuff, after you get familiar with your interface, it's super duper easy. And uh, wow, I don't have a good sign off. Bye-bye. Hope you enjoyed.